So, we've been talking here, and uh, we've talked about motion in the sky, we've talked about how things move, we've talked about uh, what's going on out here, the rising and setting of the stars, really it's Earth returning that's doing that. We've talked about how uh, as Earth goes around the sun, we have this annual change. Each night things shift a little bit. That's why the stars rise and set four minutes earlier every day. We've talked about uh, other kind of motions that go along with this. Then we talked about how the motion of the Earth, um, the rotation uh, and this motion around the sun is related to how we keep track of time. You probably talked more about timekeeping than you ever thought you needed to know. I mean, you way back in, in kindergarten, you learned it to tell time, and now we're realizing it's way more complicated than that. Uh, well, there's a couple other kinds of motion that Earth does besides that. Uh, one thing it does is, in physics, we call something precession. Now, how does this work? Imagine you have a top. And so uh, you've got this, this top, and the top is spinning, but it's leaning over. Uh, if you look at how a top works, it doesn't just like fall over. Instead, it changes what direction it's facing. Uh, it's, it, it wobbles. Uh, it has to do with how gravity pulls on it. Now, if, if we were in class uh, uh, doing this live, then I had this really cool demo uh, that I can set up and show how this works. Uh, um, but but um, you can just kind of try to imagine this, or you can like you go do you can just Google how tops work and so forth. Uh, but the Earth is a big spinning thing, and it's got the Sun and the Moon pulling on it, just like the gravity of the Earth pulls on the top. And so what happens is the Earth processes; it changes the direction it's pointing in the sky. And so over time, it changes where it's pointing. Uh, so so uh, uh, thousands of years ago, when they were building the pyramids in Egypt, there was a different star that we're pointing at. Right now, we're pointed at the star Polaris. So Polaris is the North Star. Well, it didn't used to be Polaris. That star used to be called Sinosura. And instead, we were pointing at another star that today we call Thuban. And that was the North Star when they were building the pyramids. Um, right now, the Earth is pointed right near here. So Polaris is the North Star. If you wait uh, about uh, uh, 10,000 years or so, then the star Vega will be the North Star. And so... Uh, uh, And so what happens is that, that, that this, this, this shift, uh, uh, and it's about every 26,000 years uh, uh, to go all the way around. So, so what will happen is at that point, Vega, well, that's one of the brightest stars in the sky. It's one of the five brightest stars. So that means that we'll have a really cool North Star. Well, wait, I said it's one of the five brightest. What about Polaris? Uh, when I was a kid, I was told that the North Star is the brightest star in the sky. Okay, but if you go out tonight or any night and look, face north and look up a little bit, uh, it's about a third of the way up, uh, you don't see any bright stars there at all. In fact, all the bright stars are in other parts of the sky. Uh, uh, the North Star is actually a rather dim little star, and so they lied to me. Uh, uh, of course, I, I also remember they got the whole thing wrong about time and sun being right overhead at noon and so forth okay but so there's another thing they got wrong uh, uh, but uh, um, it's, it's it's only special because it happens to be where the earth is pointing right now well interesting thing if earth changed in the direction it's pointing that would change the equator if you change the equator that would change where the equator crosses the ecliptic well, that would change all kinds of things. Right now, the Tropic of Cancer is the farthest north that the sun ever gets. That's because it used to be in the constellation Cancer at that time. Now it's between Taurus and Gemini. The Tropic of Between Taurus and Gemini sounds silly, so we still call it the Tropic of Cancer. Tropic of Capricorn, because it used to be in Capricornus, uh, now it's in Sagittarius when it's farthest south. In fact, the entire sky has shifted. 
uh, the um, vernal equinox where, where the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator is called the first point of Aries because it used to be in Aries. Well, it's not in Aries anymore. It's shifted an entire constellation over. In fact, it's about to go into Aquarius. So, so it's gone from Aries to Pisces and now to Aquarius. And so, so it's shifting. Okay. Uh, same thing, your, your, your astrological sign is supposed to be the constellation the sun is in when you're born. It would have been if you were born thousands of years ago. Uh, um, so maybe Dracula, you know, uh, uh, but uh, uh, not for us anymore. Uh, everything has shifted. And so if you go out at night and, and look, and one of the things we sometimes do is the, the horoscopes will say, you know, that, that Jupiter is in Leo. We go out and we look, and there's Jupiter and there's Leo, and obviously it's not in Leo. It's usually an entire constellation over. Okay. And so, so that's, that's been a shift that's due to precession. But it also means all the coordinates shift, all the right ascension and declination shift a little bit every year. So a star chart will give the coordinates and it will have epoch. So it would say the coordinates are good for this particular year. So epoch 2000 means the coordinates are good for 2000. Epoch 2025 means the coordinates are good for 2025. Uh, on Stellarium, when it gives right ascension and declination, it gives two values. It gives one value, the right ascension declination of 2020. 2000. So most star charts are based on, on the year 2000. And the other right ascension declination is the right ascension and declination of date. So that shows that it shifts a little bit. And so that'd be the exact right ascension and declination of that day. If you're really doing celestial navigation, you would need to know that value, not the, the 2020 value. Uh, on the other hand, the 2020 value is what most star charts are set for. So if you're trying to find something in the telescope, you need the 2020 value. Uh, uh, so um, so that's, that's, that's why those two different values are listed right there. Uh, but it does indicate that there's a little more to all this than, than sometimes people think about. There's one other kind of motion that Earth does, and that is nutation. It wobbles a little bit. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees, but it wobbles a little bit all the time. So since the Tropic of Cancer is how far north or south the sun gets, if, the, if you change the tilt a little bit, the Tropic of Cancer moves a little bit. Uh, in Taiwan, the Tropic of Cancer runs right across the island. And so what they've done is they've had a national park here. And in the park, they have this giant obelisk and a globe on the top with a hole in it. So at noon, uh, at the summer solstice, the sun shines right down that hole, right down that shaft, and illuminates uh, a target at the bottom. And that's a really cool idea, and it worked for a bunch of years, but Earth has changed the tilt, and so now the spot where that happens has moved over a little bit, so now that sh the, the beam of light, instead of coming down here, actually hits the wall of the, of the, uh, of the obelisk before it makes it all the way to the ground. And, and, um, um, and in fact, the Tropic of Cancer has moved enough that it's moved just outside the park uh, at this point. And, and so uh, that's an example of mutation. Uh, Tropic of Cancer runs right through Mexico. And there's actually a university down there where uh, one of the professors has gone out. And, and over the years, he's put uh, markers here along the highway showing where the Tropic of Cancer is in different years. And, and it moves a little bit every year because of this mutation effect. So we've got mutation, the wobbling the earth. We've got precession, the change in the direction of the, the uh, rotation of the earth, uh, the sort of wobble of the rotation. We've got annual motion that's due to the earth going around the sun. And then we have, on top of that, we have the daily diurnal motion, the rotation of the earth. So all these different things our earth moving and that's changing how the sky appears and shifts over our head but in all these things it's earth moving 
Do the stars themselves actually move? And the answer to that is yes, the stars move. So that will be our very next uh, lecture, uh, uh, the motion of the stars themselves.